Hello again. Wow, what's this? Four videos in one day. Uh, and I changed my jumper at least once. You can see it's starting to get a little bit dark. That's all right. That's uh, it shouldn't be. This shouldn't be a particularly long one. Um, the purpose of this video is to really bring together. Uh, everything that we have done up to this point. So um, we have looked at variables, we have looked at uh, different types of data, we've looked at input and output, we've looked at conditions, if statements, if, else, and elif, we've looked at those, we've looked at loops, two different types of loops, a for loop and a while loop, we have looked at importing additional modules, we've looked at some simple graphics using turtles and we have looked at generating random numbers. Okay. Okay, so all of those skills that you have developed are going to culminate now into a very, very simple game. Okay, but before I get on to that, at the end of the last video I set you a challenge and that was to write a program which would ask the user um, what colour they wanted their turtle to draw in, how big they wanted the turtle's line to be, how many sides they wanted uh, on a shape to draw, and I can't remember if I asked uh, if you uh, asked the user how long they want each side of the shape, but just in case I've done that anyway. And then your turtle will go and draw the um, the shape. Okay, so let's just take a look at what I came up with. Yours might be slightly different. Okay, that's that's fine as long as it works. Let's have a look at what I've got. So we start off by importing the turtle module. We set up the screen and we create a turtle. Okay, whenever we are doing anything regarding turtles, gener excuse me, generally speaking, that should be the first things that we do. Okay, um, and then obviously the last thing is screen.main loop. So what happens in between? First of all, we need to ask the user, uh, what color do you want? Uh, we set the colors just using a text string. Now, I haven't checked to see if any of these are valid. If the user types in an invalid uh, input, the program will crash. Um, I haven't gone into all of that into all of that detail for a verification we will look at all of that later on okay so uh, we can assume that the user is going to type in a valid color and that stores it in a variable called color what data type will that be three two one a string that's right okay uh, I then ask the user how big do you want the pen now uh, that requires an integer input so we convert the answer to an integer same thing here how many sides on the shape convert that to an integer store it in this variable sides and then how long should the sides be uh, we convert that to an integer and store it in a variable length so at the start of the program we get all of the uh, the user input set up and then we set up Alice's uh, pen color. The pen color is just going to be whatever value we have stored in color. I've used the American spelling here uh, just for consistency. Uh, I have to use color spelt wrong uh, here, so I might as use I might as well use color spelt wrong everywhere. Um, we can pretend that that we're American, y'all. Uh, so I then got alice.pen size again we're just using the uh, the size that's stored in that variable and then I've got a uh, a loop so I, I know how many times I want to loop because it's the number of sides that I specified so I'm using a for loop and not a while loop for I in range sides so it's going to do this loop as many times as we have sides it's going to move Alice forward whatever the length specified now if you didn't ask the user what the length is you probably just put alice.forward 100 and that's fine uh, and then we are going to turn her right. Remember, a full rotation is 360 degrees. The amount that we need to turn on each corner is just 360 divided by the number of sides we have. Okay, so when I run this program now, um, first thing that happens is uh, we get a... Um, well, the window pops up, but in the background we have got uh, something asking us uh, for... Um, for some input. So let's have a look what we got down here. It says, what color do you want? Well, let's say I want a green line. 
Um, how big do I want the pen? We'll go with six, yeah? Uh, how many sides on the shape? Let's have a dodecagon, so I'm going to say 12 sides. And then finally, how long should the sides be? I'm going to make it 132, okay? So let's just bring up my, uh, uh, my turtles here. Uh, when I hit enter on that 132, we've got a green 12-sided shape, okay? pretty straightforward and then I can just exit that and uh, and there we are okay cool if you got yours working brilliant if it was different to mine but it still works that's fine if it was the same as mine then that's cool as well okay so we are going to now have a look at a, uh, a guessing game now this game uh, it has many names I remember it being called high low because that was the name uh, of a game that I had on the Dragon 32 computer many, many years ago. Uh, it was called High Low, and it's just a number guessing game. So, um, I'm going to start off by creating a new file, a new Python file, and I'm going to call it High Low, like that. Okay, so I've got High Low. Uh, dot pi. Here we go. Let me just show you the rules to this game. You've probably played this game before. You've probably called it something different. Um, let's have a look at the rules. So, the computer chooses a random number between 1 and 100, and the player needs to guess that number. Okay, so the player guesses a number. If the player is correct, the uh, computer will say, yes, that's correct, and the player wins. Uh, if the player gets it wrong, the computer will either say my number's higher uh, or it will say my number's lower. Okay, and then the user will get to guess again and you keep on going until the user wins. Okay, now we can set the difficulty by saying how many tries the user gets. To start off with, we'll, we'll say the user can have six guesses. How does that sound? Okay, so we'll say six, um, six guesses. Um, six lives if you like okay so some of you will probably be able to take those rules and just go away and write your program and that's fine if you want to do that pause the video and go away and then come back and you can you can see the code that I got once you've got it working that's that's awesome those of you that are less confident with your programming um, you can follow along with me Okay, we're going to be taking it through step by step, and I'm going to I'm going to work through it the way that I would sort of like break it down. So uh, I'm not just going to say, "Hey, here's the first line, and now here's the second line." It's going to be a case of, um, "Here's how I would start off writing the program. Here's how I would modify and improve it, and so on and so forth." Okay, so get your pie charm open and let's get cracking. Well, if the computer is going to be choosing a random number, then we're going to need to use the random module. So the first thing we need to do is import uh, random. Okay, the random, random. We've imported random. Now, don't be afraid if this starts off gray and underlined. What that basically means is you've imported a module and you haven't actually used it yet. All right, fair enough. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the computer choose a random number between 1 and 100. So I'm going to call it comp num, computer's number, equals random dot rand range. Now, hopefully you can remember how this works. The first number we specify is the lowest number that's going to be in there. So we're going to say 1. Uh, and the highest number, 100, we need to go 1 higher than that so we're going to say 101 that will generate a random number between 1 and 100 okay now at this stage i know that that's going to work right but i'm just going to um i want you guys to get into the habit of testing this stuff out when you're not entirely sure whether things are going to work or not you need to get into the habit of uh, of, of testing okay so we are going to print out comp num Okay, and run that code a few times. So Control Shift F10. Here we go. It's printed out 87, uh, 49, 40, 42, 8, 19, 20, 24, 96, 11. The point is, it should never generate anything less than one, and it should never generate anything more than 100. Okay, and yeah, that seems to be all good. Okay, so. We've got our first bit working, okay? Now, obviously, 
the game is going to need to use loops. But to start off with, I just want to get one run through working before I start thinking about, right, how am I going to make it loop and, and, and do all the stuff that it needs to do. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that print now. So the computer has generated a number. Now we need to get the user to guess what the number is. So we're going to need an input. So we will store the user's guess in a variable called guess. Okay, we need to convert the um, whatever they type into an integer. Okay, so input uh, what number am I thinking of? Okay, cool. That is going to ask the user to enter a number. Okay, now we need to check a couple of things. We need to check to see if the user's guess equals the computer's number. If it does, then the user has won. Okay, if it doesn't, well, then we need to check whether it's higher or whether it's lower. So, first of all, let's say if comp num equals two equal signs remember guess uh, actually let's do it the other way around if uh, guess uh, equals compnum right, it doesn't really matter which way around you do it I just for some reason that seems to be a better way of doing it in my mind but use whatever works if guess equals compnum then obviously the player has won so we are going to uh, print um, Yes, you guessed. Uh, you get Grice guessed cor correctly. Um, you win. Yay! Right. So, if we haven't won, then we know that we have lost. Okay. So, we need to check to see if the number is higher or lower. So, I'm going to have an elif in here. So. If guess is higher than um, comp num, okay, we are going to say, um, do you know what? I should have done this. It doesn't matter. So we're, if our guess is higher than the computer's number, that means that the computer's number is lower than our guess. So we are going to print out, uh, print, um, Too high. Guess. Guess again. Okay, there we go. Boom. So if it's not equal and it's not higher, it's got to be lower. So we are going to just have an else in here. We are going to print prompt. No, we are going to print um, to low. Guess. Guess again. Okay. Um, so, okay, this will allow us one chance to get it right. Okay, so let's just run that code and see what happens. What number am I thinking of? I am going to say 50. Oh, too low. Guess again. Now, okay. We didn't get any errors, but we can't. We still don't have enough information here to know if this is working properly or not. So we're going to use a little bit of debug cheating here, um, and we are going to before we ask the user to enter their guess, we're going to print out the number. Okay, just to make it sh make sure that we know that this is debug and this is not going into the final game. Um, we can say comp uh, comp num num is okay so now when i run it it's told me that it's thinking of 79 which means if i type in 79 it should say yeah you got it right excellent okay good but now we need to test it again just to make sure, right, the number that is thinking of is 17. I need to guess something lower than 17 so it can say that. Let's say I guess 12. It should say, yes, too low. Guess again. 
Okay, so I'm going to run it again. This time it's thinking of 29, so I'm going to guess something higher than that. Let's say 47, and it should say too high. Guess again. I run this code now. There we go. Too high. Guess again. Awesome. We've got the core functionality of our game up and running. But the game's no fun, really, if you only get one shot. Okay, so we need to put some, uh, some loops in there. Okay, now there's a number of different ways that you could do it. If you are setting a number of lives, um, you could use a for loop. But the problem is, if you use a for loop, what then happens if the user wins? Okay, uh, if they win, it's still like if you say, right, for I in range six, for instance, you think, right, they've got six guesses, we're going to do this six times. What if they guess the number on turn two? Are they going to have to then go through another uh, four turns, even though they've already guessed the number? Okay, so we don't know how many times it's going to run. We know there's going to be a maximum of six times, but we don't know how many times it's it's actually going to run precisely, which means we're not going to use a for loop for this one. We're going to use a while loop. Okay, so as I did in a previous example, I'm going to set up a Boolean value called game running. Okay, game running is going to start off set to true. We're assuming that the game is going to be running to start off with. Okay, and we are going to have a while loop which is while game running okay and all of this stuff happens inside the while loop so I'm just going to highlight it and hit tab and now it's inside the um, the game loop now at the moment this is going to go on forever and ever and ever okay but just to double check let's just make sure that everything's working so comp num is 26 what number am I thinking of if I type in 26 it should say yes you're a winner Okay, and now obviously it's going to do that over and over and over again um, because we have asked the user to enter their guess before we entered the loop. Okay, now I did that deliberately because it's the sort of thing that when you are first writing these programs you might forget about and I wanted to show you that if your code doesn't work properly or you make a design mistake you can just easily um, you can just easily um, change the bits that you need to change without having to do a ground up rewrite okay so Remember, everything that we want to happen during the turn has to be inside the while loop. Okay, so asking the user what number the computer is thinking of, that's something that happens every single turn. Okay, so it needs to be part of the loop. Choosing the number only happens at the start. The computer doesn't choose a new number every turn. That would be a nightmare. We'd never win. Okay, so uh, we need to ask the user every turn. Okay, uh, I hope you noticed that when I was in that infinite loop, I just clicked on this uh, uh, button here. When I run it, you see it turns red. If you click on that, it will instantly terminate your uh, your program there. Okay, so let's run it again. Is the computer's thinking of 92? So now, if I type in 92, yes, you guess correctly, you win. Now, because we don't have any condition that ends our while loop, we're going to keep on doing this forever. But we can use this to our advantage. Um, because we can then test to make sure that all of the stuff works as intended. Okay, so uh, if I say 12, it should say too low. Yep, and if I say uh, 99, it should say too high. Okay, uh, and uh, I've said 92. There we go. Brilliant. Okay, so it's mostly working. The next thing we need to do is get the um, game to exit if we if we win the uh, the game and, and that's very simple because if we've guessed it correctly all we do is set game running to false okay now because this if statement it's all it's either this happens or this happens or this happens and there's nothing else inside the while loop after that we don't have to worry about exiting the loop because it's going to skip past this and then go back up and check the condition before exiting Okay, so we're getting closer to a working version of our game. 
okay so I know that the computer is thinking of 65 if I say 50 it's too low right if I say 75 it's too high um, if I go lower so let's say uh, 62 that's too low okay so I know it's between 62 and 75 let's try 68 it's too high so uh, 66 would be my next guess that's too high um, so I know it's between 62 and 66 um, 64 maybe no so well, I know it's now between 64 and 66 so I can guess 65 there we go right we got it correct finally and then it exited okay now our game's almost working almost but we need to keep track of how many times the uh, we've 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 had a guess. Okay, so every time we make a guess, our um, uh, counter should go up by one. To start off with, um, let's call it guesses. When we start the game, we've made zero guesses. Okay, after we've made a guess, we can um, do guesses plus equals one cool so after we've checked this regardless of whether we are um, uh, whether we've won uh, or whether we've gone too high or whether we've gone too low we then finally the last thing in the while loop we need to check to see um, if our guesses has gone over six we're allowed six guesses right so I can say if guesses is uh, greater than six we are going to print you lose the number was and then we're going to say um, string comp num okay so it's going to um, it's going to tell us we've lost if we've if we've guessed more than six times and then it is going to uh, set game running uh, to uh, false okay so let's just check this now if I run the program uh, it's thinking of the number 50 um, 50 would be my first guess but for the purposes of testing I'm gonna deliberately guess the wrong number um, right too low guess again that's one guess two guesses three guesses four guesses five guesses six guesses seven guesses and it's told me I lose okay so I checked here to see if guesses was greater than six if I go up to six then according to this that's fine it's only when you guess that extra uh, that extra one so if you wanted that to actually end on six guesses you could put greater than or equal to six there okay um, let's see I tell you what else we could do um, we could have a line that prints out how many guesses it took um, it took uh, it took that many guesses let's run this game okay now I know he's thinking of 55 but I'm gonna play this game as I normally would I'm gonna guess 50 that's too low so now I'm gonna guess 75 okay that's too high so I'm gonna guess 62 that's too high uh, so I'm going to guess 56 that's too high so I'm gonna guess 53 that's too low so I'm gonna guess well it's either 54 or 55 I'm gonna go 54 ah too low I lost the answer was 55 okay how many guesses did that take one two three four five six okay um, 
what I'm going to do now, I am going to get rid of this debug line. You'll notice I haven't deleted it, I've just commented it out. Okay, uh, it's always, if you've got code which is still going to be useful, uh, if you delete it, it's gone forever. If you just comment it out, it'll be ignored when you run the program, uh, and then you can put it back in later on. So if I run the game now, let's have a look. What number am I thinking of? Let's try 50. That's too high. Okay, let's try 25. That's too high. Okay, so I'm going to try 12. 12 is too high. Let's try 6. 6 is too high. 3? Yeah, there we go. Okay, three was the answer, and it took me five guesses. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Okay, let's let's have another game. What number am I thinking of? We'll try the same deal again. Uh, 50 is too high, so we're going to go 25. 25 is too high. Let's go 12. Too low. Okay, so we're going to go for 18. 18 is too high, so we know it's between... 12 and 18 so I'm going to try 15 15's too high so it's either 13 or 14 yeah what's it gonna be let's say 14 ah too too high you lose now there's still a couple of bugs in here okay I mean for example we guessed we guessed wrong on this last one. It says too high. Guess again, and then it instantly sells us. You lose. Okay. Now there's. I'm not going to show you how you can sort of like fix that so that it flows a little bit better. It's up to you to iron out some of those bugs that are in uh, this game. Okay. But in under half an hour, you have created a working number guessing game in Python. Okay. And people might look at it and say. Pfft, What's that? That's, that's nothing. But you can look at it and say, I made this. I am bending the computer to my will. The computer is doing what I ask it to do. Okay, And this is just the start. It all, it all gets better from here on out. Okay. Now, if you're just joining us from writing your own code, you can compare it to, uh, to my code here and, uh, and see, how you, see how you got on. Um, hopefully this hasn't been um, too difficult to understand what's going on hopefully the process that I went through showing you how I gradually built this game up that will help you like you know with your thought processes when it comes to creating uh, your own game and speaking of creating your own game without following my tutorial I've got a challenge for you okay now there is a dice rolling game called Craps. You might think that's a hilarious name. And yeah, if I was a teenager, I'd probably think it was a hilarious name as well. Uh, but it is what it is. That's what it's that's that's what the uh, that's what the game uh, is. Now with Craps, you roll two dice. Okay? So you're generating random numbers here, but be careful generating uh, the roll of two six-sided dice is not generating a random number between 2 and 12 because the chances of uh, getting something like a 7 is much higher than the chances of getting a, uh, a 4 for instance okay so what you'd have to do is generate a random number between 1 and 6 generate another random number between 1 and 6 and then add them together okay so let me show you a simplified version of the rules of craps. Okay, so it's a gambling game based on the out, uh, based on the outcome of two dice. Let's say you start off with a thousand. Have I actually put a thousand pounds in there, or have I put a thousand dollars? I have put a thousand pounds. That's good. We're not American anymore. Okay, I might have misspelled color, but like, we're we're. Good and, good and British now. Okay, so you start off with a thousand pounds. Okay, you can place any bet that you want as long as you've got the funds to cover it. Okay, so let's keep it simple as well. Let's say you can only bet multiples of a pound. So you can bet a pound, you can bet 10 pounds, you can bet 50 pounds, you can bet a thousand pounds. As long as you have the money, you can bet it. Okay, the player must then choose what they are betting on. There's three options. Either 2 or 12, or 4 or 10, or 6 or 8. 
Okay, so if you say, I am betting that those dice will either come up a 2 or a 12, right? If you roll the dice and they come up a 2, you win. If you roll the dice and they come up 12, you win. If you roll the dice and they come up any other value, you lose. Does that make sense? Yeah? If you say, I'm betting on 4 or 10, you roll the dice. If they come up a 4, you win. If they come up a, tw uh, a 10, you win. If they come up anything else, you lose. All right. Now, the payouts, because it's way more difficult to roll uh, a 2 or a 12 than it is to roll a 6 or an 8, you get a higher payout for, uh, for those ones. Okay, so if you bet £10 and you bet £10 on 2 or 12 and your dice comes up as 12, you win 5 times the amount. So you get 50 quid back. Okay, if you bet... Um, on 4 or 10, you get two and a half times back. So if you bet a tenner, you get 25 quid back. If you bet on 6 or 8, you get one and a half times back. So you'd get 15 times back on a stake of £10. Okay. After each round, the player has the opportunity to take their winnings and leave. If the player has no money left, they're thrown out of the casino. Okay, so those are the rules. What you need to do is see if you can write a game where you start off with a thousand pounds, you keep on playing until either you quit or you run out of money, yeah, uh, and the game will say how much are you betting, what type of bet are you making, then it will roll the dice, it will compare the scores, if you win, it will tell you you win, and it will pay out whatever uh, your stake was, multiplied by the odds of whatever it was you chose. If you lose, it will say you lost, and you lose your stake. Okay? That's basically it. Okay, you can use the... Um, the code that we've done here, things like generating these random numbers are going to be useful. Asking for the user input and doing things based on that user input is going to be useful. You will definitely need to use um, loops. You will definitely need to use conditions. Um, you will uh, definitely need to use if statements as well. Okay, And it is up to you what variables you use, but there's going to be quite a few variables. I would recommend having a variable called um, money, how much money you've got, maybe a variable called stake, how much you are betting, uh, a variable called um, result, so whatever the result of the dice is, you know. Um, but it is up to you how you go about doing this. Okay, and it's probably going to be next week now that the uh, that the video is up. But obviously, if you're watching this next week, then the video is probably already there, so you can just skip straight to the answer. But we will have a look next time at the result, and next time we will be delving into the joys of data structures, lists, and dictionaries. Okay, so we'll be. Uh, We'll be looking at how you can, instead of having multiple different variables, you can group your data together using a single variable. Okay, But you have a mission now. It's not easy. See how well you do with that. Okay, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, if you get stuck, feel free to um, uh, ask for some help in the comments or email me directly or post a message on the Google Classroom. Um, I will try and help you out as much as I can. Uh, please do not post your code listings in the comments because that might be a spoiler for those people that want to uh, create their, uh, their code. Unless you've got a particularly buggy piece of code uh, in which case you could probably ask questions, but the formatting on the YouTube comment sections are going to mong your code something awful, so it's probably a, a, probably a bad idea. But that's it for another week. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I shall see you next time.